Okay, so today we're going to make a beef stew MRE that will last us up to a year uh, when it's done. And it'll be very easy to make once it's done. You just add hot water and um, it'll make a delicious beef stew. Now, what you're going to need for this is a dryer. I have this little commercial chef uh, dehydrator here that I bought on Amazon a few years ago. It works well. Um, and this is what we're going to use. This is dried beef. It has been marinated in a lemon pepper and teriyaki mix overnight and then dried. I got it at the Asian food market in these very thin sheets which are very nice for drying. It takes two to four hours, thereabouts. Next we got this corn. It's just standard corn from a uh, Green Giant brand I think. And you just put it in the dryer and dry it. Next we got the Idahoan loaded baked mashed potatoes and the brown gravy instant mix. After that we got this powdered vitamin enriched spinach. Uh, this is made the same way as the other dried ingredients. Just dry it on the dryer and then I powdered the spinach and mixed in some vitamin tablets as well that I'd also powdered. So it's got all of our necessary vitamins and whatnot in there. This is the same as the spinach, except it is broccoli. Again, powdered and mixed with vitamins. Next we have the silica gel packets. You can buy these on Amazon. I believe a 22 pack, yeah, a 22 pack was about eight to nine dollars. Um, they are great. What they do is they suck out the moisture inside the packet in case moisture gets in. Now, a lot of people ask why, but we'll get to that later. These are the vacuum seal bags we're going to use. They come in a long sheet that you can cut off and seal and make bags in any size you want. And this is the Seal A Meal Vacuum Sealer. I got this at Walmart for about 20 bucks, And it's been working now for almost a year, and it's working really good. So... This is what we're using. I could dry my own potatoes and stuff like that and use them, but I find these instant ones work just as well and with a lot less work. So we're going to use that to cut a few steps out. If you want to use fresh ones, you certainly can though. Same with gravy. It's really difficult to dry liquids and I haven't completely mastered that part yet, so these powdered ones will do just fine. Now, a lot of people ask why to use the silica gel packets if you're going to vacuum seal it. And that's because the vacuum seal doesn't always hold. Sometimes it can weaken and let air in and that can let moisture in. And if that's the case, you want a silica gel packet in there in case it does fail so that it doesn't go bad on you. But if the seal holds and the silica gel packet is in there, uh, these can last for a year or more. I wouldn't recommend eating them after a year, but I don't plan to let them sit that long, so whatever. These will be good on uh, my road trips all over the place as a way to have a good meal without actually having to go to a restaurant or something. So first things first, we need a one-fourth cup of uh, potatoes. And uh, this will make a great base for our soup. It will thicken it up and give us an extra vegetable in there. I think potatoes are a vegetable. Yeah, I think they're considered a vegetable, but not a fruit. So, it is a bit of a messy process though. Uh, if you have a funnel, I suggest you use it. I don't have a funnel, so I'm making do. But uh, one fourth cup of those. Then you're going to want to put the silica gel packet in. You're going to want to put this in early so that it reaches the whole bottom. Um, but you also don't want it to be too far on the top so that it interferes with the sealing process. But that should be good for that. Now, the next thing we're going to need here, in a second here, is this. This is a one tablespoon. Um... Uh, spoon and we're going to add a tablespoon of the uh, 
gravy with it. Maybe two. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how much it looks like. Now, you, these aren't set measurements. You can add more or less of whatever you'd like. I think I'll add two, because I like gravy a lot. But you can add more or less of whatever you like in there, and it'll it'll taste fine. You just need to have a decent balance. Next, we're going to add the beef. <laughs> that. Or maybe maybe we'll add the spinach next. Yeah, we'll add the spinach next, I think. Just a sprinkle or two in there, and the broccoli. Yeah, just a sprinkle or two. Doesn't need to be a lot. Anyway, yeah, now we'll do the beef. And again, the order doesn't really matter that much either. But, um, you do want to get it so that uh, everything gets nice and moist when you add the water. Now, you do want to take the silica gel packet out before you add the water. Or just dump it all into a bowl and then fish the silica gel packet out, and then add the water. Whatever you'd like to do. But, um, yeah. Just stuff it down in there as good as you can. I'm going to take the tablespoon again and add a tablespoon of corn. Yeah, corn takes a good while to dehydrate, but not as much as the beef. I'd say about an hour or two, two hours. It's good stuff. That's an easy vegetable to add into there. And that's what it looks like when it's ready to be sealed. Now let's go ahead and we will seal this. Um, the sealer can be a bit uh, temperamental, but uh, we'll give it a try and see if it works. If the seal isn't down properly, it won't work. Um, see that white part? That's where it seals, and the copper part is where it's... That, sorry, the white part is where it vacuums, and the copper part's where it seals. So it needs to be flat down there. Press it down with your hands until the green light comes on, that means uh, you can leave your hands, and the red light means that it is sealing. And then just wait for it to vacuum all the air out and seal it. Once the lights are off, it's safe to take it off. And there you go, you have yourself a vacuum sealed beef stew dinner. This will feed about one person per packet. Um, I'm going to make a whole bunch of these, so... Okay, next we're going to do a barbecued pork soup. Um, again, same thing as the beef stew, just pour in water and uh, it'll rehydrate and make a nice meal. This is the barbecued pork. It was uh, marinated in a honey barbecue sauce overnight and then dried. Pork takes a lot longer to dry. This is the same corn that we used in the beef stew. Um, that's two cans worth in there, by the way. And this, I'm really excited about this. This is uh, potato sticks and barbecue chips from the Dollar Tree, uh, which I powdered up into a nice powder and mixed together. These are both the barbecue flavored. This will give our soup a nice smoky barbecue flavor and thicken it up due to the potato bits in there. It's a lot cheaper than buying the barbecue seasoning, which you can get and put in here instead, but uh, I like this. Again, it also thickens it up and gives it a nice, nicer texture, I think. Uh, it can be a bit greasy, so uh, watch out for that. This one we're really going to need the silica gel packets for. We have the same spinach and broccoli from the barbecue beef and the same other implements. So, let's get started, shall we? Let's see here. Here we go. Okay. So, the barbecue pork takes, I think, about 10 to 12 hours to dry properly. It was really surprising to me how long it took. I was not expecting that whatsoever. So, yeah. Be ready for that. I got it at the same Asian food market, though. You know what, I think we're going to add in some of this brown gravy, too. Just to give it a little bit of more, uh, more of a soup type of deal flavor. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce that. I'm not a professional chef, but, uh, well, maybe one day I will be. Who knows? I certainly would like to be. Unfortunately, college is expensive. So, I love being on the road too much. 
So we're going to take a tablespoon or two of this and put it in there. This is the barbecue uh, potato mix. There we go. I think two or so, thereabouts. Again, you don't need exact measurements for this. You can add more or less of whatever you like. I just like to have exact measurements if I can so that I can replicate over and over again. And we're going to put in the silica gel packet just like we did before. And like I said, this one really needs it because the uh, barbecue part is still very greasy. So that one really does need it. And we're going to put in a tablespoon or two of the brown gravy. This is the same packet that we used for that uh, beef stew. So you can get two to three meals out of one packet of that. So that's, that's a good deal. It's only like 60 cents, I think, at Walmart. Well, anyway. And uh, next we're going to add in the corn. And you can add any vegetable you want. I just used corn for this. I had some other beef stew meals earlier where I added uh, dried carrots to. The carrots take a lot longer to dry than corn does for some reason. And I ran out of the carrots, so we're just using corn on this one. There's them and the powdered spinach and broccoli. I got my mortar and pestle, which I used to powder the broccoli and spinach at a table store a while back. Anyway. Moving on, this is the pork. I got it at the same Asian market where I got the beef. Again, in the same nice thin strips. It was actually on sale. And you can see it dried very nicely. It just took a lot longer to do so. But uh, it should rehydrate very nicely and give us some nice big chunks of pork in there. This is actually pork tenderloin, I, the uh, beef was a round, beef round. This is pork tenderloin. Uh, yeah. It was actually on sale there. I think it was like $5 for a big box of it. Not sure what it uh, was intended to be used for, but I like to dry it and use it for recipes like this. There we go. Got some nice big pieces there to put in there. Now, you don't want to overstuff it, because if you do, it could interfere with the sealing process and cause the seal to fail. So you don't want to overstuff it, but you want to get a good amount in there, too. So it's a bit of a balancing act there. I like a lot of the pork and meat in there, so I'm going to stuff a bit more in there. Just as much as I can, and then we're going to seal it. Let's go ahead and seal it again. Uh, why is the vacuum sealer? The copper is. Why is the vacuum? The copper sealer, and then the lights. Same basic process, just with different ingredients. Now, like I said, these can be finicky if uh, the uh, bag isn't down straight, or if there's a gap or anything like that. It won't properly seal it. It'll still vacuum out the air, but it won't seal it. So, or sometimes you have to really, really press it down. See, this one's giving me a bit of a trouble here. Uh, sometimes you have to flip it over, sometimes you just have to re-set uh, it down so that it's all nice and even. Yeah, that's the downside of getting the cheap model of vacuum sealer, is that it can be very picky about it. But if you keep at it, you'll get it done eventually. Let's see, I'm going to try to spin it around here, see if that works. doesn't look like it's working. So, I'm just going to keep trying and eventually it'll get there. It's just, these things can be very picky. But, it's worth it. It's worth all the effort, I guarantee you that. Because, when this is done, I won't have to pay for like 26, 28 meals, at least. Probably a lot more, because I'm going to do this a lot more. I think I've got like 25 or so meals ready already. But, uh, we'll take a look at that later, I think go. We got it. See? Just took a little while. I don't know what was wrong with it. Maybe a little bit of the grease got on there was interfering. Maybe there's a little gap. I don't know. But there's our barbecued pork meal. Barbecued pork stew. 
ready to eat and ready to store. Now, let me show you what I got so far here. Uh, there's the pestle, there's the mortar and pestle. Um, but these are the meals that I already have ready. This one is a shepherd's pie with ground beef in there, potatoes, dried tomatoes, and corn. And I've got quite a few of those. And let's see if I can find a different one here. No, oh, that's another, uh, that's another shepherd's pie, I think. I got a lot of, uh, different meals in here. There we go. Here's one, I think. Yes, this one is a lemon pepper sausage, uh, lemon pepper sausage. Uh, ignore the green in there, that's just powdered spinach. It's not mold. I swear it isn't. <laughs> um, let's see. This one is a Cajun sausage soup. I had some Cajun sausages and I just decided to make a Cajun sausage. Uh, I had the uh, had one in here that was really oh here we go. This is a uh, lemon pepper sausage and rice. Very nice. Uh, another shepherd's pie. I really like shepherd's pie. It's one of my favorite meals to make. I can't really make it very adequately with this, but I get a good good uh, version of it. And this is the beef stew with the carrots I told you about before. You can see the carrots in there. So very nice. Um, I believe I have, okay, let's see, there's another uh, rice one. But yeah, these are what I got. Uh, I got uh, three totes full of them. I think it's about 28 meals, I think. 28, 29 meals. And then I've got hardtack on top of that. So I'm pretty much set for almost a full month just on these alone. Not that I'll be eating them for a month straight, but... You know, we'll see what happens. I would like to thank you all for watching this video. Um, this is going to be a travel vlog channel where I will travel the country and show off all sorts of things wherever I go. I'll probably make another video outlining my itinerary when I have one ready to go. But this is just one of the prep videos for my trip. I'd appreciate if you would like and subscribe for more. The first of my travel vlog videos should be out sometime early to mid-June. Possibly late June, depending on when I'm able to actually get everything ready to go. And uh, I may upload a couple other prep videos before then to show you a bit of what to expect on this channel. So, thank you all for watching. Have a good day.